Hello everybody and welcome to episode 41. Today we're going to be making the grappling hook, okay? It's definitely not... Okay, it definitely is the hook shot from Zelda. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it shoots out a big chain um, with a hook on the end and that allows us to hook onto certain things and drag us towards them, which will be cool for like bringing us across gaps and so on. Um, we can also use it to break things at a distance, a bit like the bow, and also bring certain items towards us. So we see where we just sort of hoover up those bomb collectibles and drag them towards us, and so on, okay? There's a lot of code that goes with this, uh, so today we're going to be just making the code, and it's essentially going to be an invisible hook shot. The, the fires, it'll work exactly the same, um, you just won't be able to physically see uh, the chain and the hook. Um, and then next episode we'll handle actually drawing it, okay? It's just because there's so much code, we have to kind of break it down into two. Now this is a highly specific feature, and maybe you don't want it in your game, you know, for whatever reason. Um, that's perfectly fine, in which case this is super modular, isn't really going to impact anything else, so you can just go ahead and skip this episode and the next episode if you're not interested in this at all. Um, as I say, it's highly specific, and the main reason we're doing it is partly just for fun, and um, also partly uh, to kind of just show how the game's foundation will handle writing in an extremely specific feature, like a hookshot, okay? Um, it's similar to the bombs and the bow and so on, but um, given those are a little bit more generic, this is just really specific and has a bit more going on. I just wanted to show you how that system mostly just works the same, um, and, and, and how to like contain everything and make it, make it work without kind of impacting on other things in the game and the foundation, okay? So without taking up too much time, I just want to talk quickly about how it works. Um, so as with the other ones, we press a button to go into a state, just as with the bow and the bomb. It gives us this kind of little Mega Man looking animation. And uh, we're just going to check a position in front of uh, the player, just every like like frame, okay? And that position is just going to extend every frame. And we're just looking for anything that is hookable, okay? So our entities are going to uh, get a new variable that tells us whether or not they are hookable. And it'll be two types of hookable. There'll be a type of hookable that means uh, we get brought towards um, the object like that. Um, there'll be a type that means it gets brought towards us like that. Um, and also, you know, uh, we'll make it so that they can be hit by it as well. So if it has neither of those things, it just allows us to like break the entity or, or damage it in some way, right? And then if we don't hit anything or we hit some sort of blocker, we just enter a missed state, which causes the, the chain to retract. And when it reaches us, we can then just finally leave and enter the free state again. Okay. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in some sprites. Uh, I know I said we're going to do the drawing next episode and we are, but, um, uh, I'm going to need some of the sprites in now because we do some logic and stuff based on them and like width and stuff like that so it's good to get them all in ahead of time so i'm just going to right click on any of my sprites go to create sprite from images uh the first one i'm looking for is s player hook underscore strip four if you're using my assets and what i'm going to call it is s player hook i'll just zoom in on that for you um and the origin just needs to match up with kind of how our player is set up okay so you can see uh it's right there okay just like in that middle of uh, the back foot there. Um, you can just compare that very quickly with uh, S player just to make sure it's in the right place, just on that that uh, idle pose. Uh, and however you're, you know, if you're using different assets and so on, you just want to make sure that the origins line up so that when you go from one animation to the next, he's not like teleporting around or looking down. Okay, we've been through all this before, but just, you know, to reiterate, that's where it should be for this particular sprite. Again, don't worry about frame rate or anything like that. All right, simple so far. Uh, let's add another couple of sprites. Um, S hook chain, and uh, that's going to be called S hook chain. Um, the origin for this one to be set to the middle center. It's just a single frame, and it's going to make up each individual segment of the kind of the chain of the, the, the grappling hook. All right, and uh, add another one. S hook blade underscore strip four. S hook blade is the name. And the origin again, middle center. Frame rate again doesn't matter. It's just showing us the different uh, directions of the blade. All right, now our sprites are in. Um, the next thing we're going to do is set up our entities uh, to be ready to be hooked and respond to be hooked in the correct way. So um, I'm just going to go to P entity, our uh, root parent entity object and in the variable definitions window I just click this button if you haven't got it open already um, I'll zoom right in 
At the bottom here, we're just going to add one new variable. Okay, just following the pattern of all the others, it's going to be called entity uh, hookable. Um, we're going to make this one an integer. Um, we're actually going to define it as an integer here and click this little uh, options button here. Um, it'll open up this little window where we can take use range and we can actually just set a minimum and maximum. Uh, we'll have a min of zero and a max of two. Um, so it'll be zero by default. Um, that just allows us when we're modifying it in other entities to just sort of use this little sliding bar um, and just set it to those values so that it can never be a value outside of um, the values we expect it to be. All right, it's pretty useful. Um, just stops you making a mistake in the editor. But then we're going to leave the default at zero or just not hookable. Okay. Um, we're going to use a hookable value of one for things we want to be able to drag to the player, so our collectibles, and a value of two for things we want to drag the player to, so something like a signpost or something wedged in the ground or whatever, right? So now let's set those exact two examples up. Uh, I'm going to press Control T and type O signpost uh, just to get our signpost object, go to its variable definitions, and at the bottom now it'll have entity hookable. Uh, so I'm going to take this and we're going to set entity hookable to two because this is something we want to drag ourselves towards. Then I'm going to type O collectible. Uh, is it O collect or is it P collectible? P collectible, yeah, of course, it's a parent object. And then go to variable definitions. And on the bottom here, just the same. Um, obviously it has its own collect stuff down here, but it'll still have entity hookable here. And we can set that to be one so that all of our collectibles, uh, our arrow drop, our bomb drop, our coin will now inherit that. Um, they can have their own specific one set, obviously, but by default they'll inherit this um, as one, so that um, when we hit them with the hookshot, they'll get dragged towards the player. Next up, we have a little bit of setup to do in the player, so I'm going to press Control T again and type O player, and just go to that uh, and bring up the create events. Okay. Um, um, first of all. Uh, going to put in a new speed. We've got a lot of values here that are starting to it's starting to get a bit of a mess in here, so I might just reorganize these a little. Uh, just put the speeds together, keep the distances together, the sprite stuff down here. Uh, that'll do for now. But <laughs> over time, this is starting to get messier and messier. You might want to sort of you know split these into sections, name them with comments and so on. Um, we're just trying to. Uh, be fast and teach you as much as quickly as possible. And, uh, you know, we're already like over 40 episodes in. So <laughs> um, what we're going to add in here, though, is we're going to, in the little speed section I've just created, I'm going to add speed hook. So we're going to have a speed that the hook is going to move every frame. It's going to be 3.0, three pixels a frame. Uh, we're going to have a distance as well, distance hook. So it's, it's actual range, which is useful compared to our, our various other ranges, the range of our roll, our bonk, and, and so on. Uh, I'm going to make it 88. That was just the value I happen to like. You can do whatever you like, and you can play around with it and see the, dist, uh, the difference it causes. Um, and then underneath the others, we're going to have a new section just for the hook, because we need a few hook-specific values. So hook is going to equal 0. Uh, hook x is going to equal 0. Hook y is going to equal 0. And hook size is going to equal sprite get width s hook chain. Okay, so we're just going to get the width of that um, chain segment and put that into uh, a variable. I think some of these we didn't actually technically have to define with the, the code I write, but it's good practice, you know, to define everything that you're going to use. Next, we're going to go to our macros. And find macros and all caps, um, just all of our, our constants and macros and so on. We're going to make a new enum down here. Um, I don't know why this yeah, <laughs> this doesn't need to be in function macros. That was probably just a conversion thing from when we converted the project um, to 2.3. Uh, um, and, and these don't need to be tabbed out either. I don't know why it ended up like that. Uh, again, like, you, yeah, you, you don't actually need this to be defined in a functions if yours is like that because it got converted along the way. It doesn't need to be. Um, all this will get... Uh, run at compile time doesn't need to actually it just needs to exist as a script in your project all right all this macro stuff it can be literally anywhere because when you compile the game uh, game maker goes through everything and we'll just like burn this stuff into your game and it, it's literally text replacement macros right so it goes through finds everywhere that we've written cardinal there and it just replaces that code with the code on the end of here okay um that's how they function. Uh, so quite similar with enums as well. So you don't need that function thing if you happen to have it. Uh, we want a new enum. 
Uh, it's going to be called hook status because our hook shot is basically going to be a state machine within a state machine. So we're going to go into the hook state, but then um, our hook can be in various different states. It can be in the extending states. So it's, you know, uh, extending, right? <laughs> and every frame looking for a new thing to see if we've hooked something. It can be in the pull to player state uh, or the pull to entity state, depending on what it is we've hooked. We talked about this earlier. And it can be in the missed state, which just means it's going to be, oh, we don't need a comma there. It's just going to be retracting um, towards, uh, let's just make that nice and big, so you can see those. Probably should have done the same thing on the player stuff. Hopefully it was visible enough. Um, uh, but yeah, it can be in the missed state, which just means we haven't hit anything or we've hit something we can't hook some sort of blocker. And we're going to be retracting, and then when that ends, we go back to the normal state. Okay, uh, next we're going to find our item functions. Um, is that in player general? Yes, use item funks. Um, zoom out a little bit, actually. I zoomed in probably a bit too much there. <laughs> um, at the end here, we already have a use item hook already set up for us. Doesn't do anything yet, though. That's what we need to change. We're going to set our state to be player state hook. Uh, which will be um, a state script that we haven't written yet. And local frame, we're just going to reset to zero. It's just a good habit when we change states. And I think we can just check if we go to um, the free state and scroll down to where the item use is. Yeah, just make sure in the case item hook, we've actually got use item hook already set up. Um, so we know when we have the hook uh, equipped and we use that, it's going to come to here. Um, so now we just need to define player state hook. So I'm going to make a new state script in here called player state hook. Um, it'll give us a function. We can obviously get rid of that comment up there, bring this down. Now this is going to be quite a big function, all right? Um, so settle in. <laughs> um, it's quite a few lines in this one. Um, I'll try and explain it as I go. All right. Um, H speed equals zero and V speed equals zero. All right, we're just resetting our speed at the start. It's just a good habit. We might have had a bunch of speed from something else when we transition to this, which so make sure we don't have any. Um, we're not really going to do any movement or anything in this um, state, uh, but just to make sure that we don't come into it with some speed and then come out of it back into the free state and that speed like carries over. Okay, so just make sure we clear it. And if just arriving in this state. Okay, so if we've just arrived in the hook state, uh, we want to set things up. So we know if we've just arrived in the state because our sprite won't be correct. So if our sprite index is not s player hook, that means we've just arrived in this state from whatever other state, probably one of the idle poses or a run pose or whatever, right? Um, if that's the case, uh, we're going to set hook to equal zero hook x to equal zero. This is why I said we didn't really need to define those in the create event because they get defined here, but it is still good practice. Um, hook status is going to equal hook status extending because that's the, the initial state we'll want to go into within our state machine within a state machine. And hooked entity is going to equal no one. It's worth me pointing out what these um, variables up here are going to do. I think these two are pretty obvious, but um, hook is going to just tell us how far along our hook is. So it'll be between 0 and 88, you know, that the, the distance that we set for the hook. Um, hook X and hook Y are just going to be relative coordinates, um, like, like coordinates relative to our player that tells us the exact position um, that we're looking. So that'll be sort of like this value, but um, on a vector of either horizontal or vertical, right? Um, and as I say, these are just, you know, the state we're currently in and if we've actually hooked an entity, what that um, object's ID is or um, instance ID, I should probably say. Next up, um, we're going to update the sprite. All right, um, same old stuff. Sprite index is going to equal S player hook because uh, we need to actually set it to that since we know it's not in that and we've just arrived here. Uh, image index is going to equal floor. Uh, oh wait, I have this in my script to recalculate. Yeah, recalculate the uh, the direction. But we actually have a thing for this now. I can just write cardinal. Duh. Forget I didn't actually have that when I originally wrote this code. Um, so yeah, we can just write that in, and that'll give us our value between naught and three. That gives us the right direction for that sprite, right? Uh, image speed is going to equal zero, and uh, that's everything we need to do when just arriving. Um, in the hook state. All right, next up, we want to actually extend the hook. All right, I'm just going to paste this code in. Um, we're going to go over, all right, because 
this video will go on a very long time if I type out each individual line of everything that's going to be in this statement, okay? Um, so let's just go over this. Uh, so this is the extend retract hook section, okay? We've defined a local variable, uh, speed hook temp equals speed hook, um, because we're going to modify it um, uh, based on whether or not we're extending or retracting, okay? So if we're in any status other than hook status extending, then we're going to multiply our speed by negative one. All right, because so if we're extending, we're just going to add that speed um, to our hook's position every frame. Um, otherwise, we want to retract it, okay? Either we're dragging the thing towards us or, or whatever, or it's just retracting. Um, so it wants to go in the opposite direction if it's not the extending state, all right? Um, then we just add that value to hook with hook plus equals speed hook temp. And then we do a switch statement uh, with image index, okay? We take uh, whatever our image index is, which tells us which direction we're in from 0 to 3, all right? And uh, we do something based on that. So if we're facing to the right, a case 0, we take hook x and we make it equal to hook, all right? So our horizontal hook position just becomes whatever hook is. That's the simplest one. Um, if we're facing up, then we modify hook y instead, all right? And we make that um, the negative um, of our hook because you know when you move up in y that's reducing um, a y position right um, left is making hook x negative hook and moving down is making hook y positive hook all right and then that gives hook x hooks y it, one of them's going to be zero right because so we're going to go in four um, directions right so either y will be zero or x will be zero and then the other one will be a positive or negative number that just ends up giving us like a relative coordinate all right so like if we're 30 to the right of the player, it'll give us, you know, a coordinate of 30, 0. 30 to the, 30 long x and 0 in y. And if we're going um, up a little, it'll be like negative 10, a, a 0, negative 10, right? 0 along the x-axis, negative 10 on the y-axis. Coordinate that's relative to our player, right? Not absolute in space, it's not a room position, but it's relative to wherever our player is, all right? That'll be very useful when it comes to actually drawing the, the hook and so on, but also importantly useful for finding if we've actually hooked anything, <laughs> which is what we'll come to next. Now, the next section I'm going to do a little bit more by hand rather than copying and pasting, um, just because it's a um, another switch statement, but a big chunky one, um, a switch statement with switch statements in it. Um, it gets a little bit tricky, um, so I want to make sure we open our braces and close them in the right place and so on. Um, so... I'm going to type it by hand um, just so we can go over it. So switch hook status. This is our hook shot state machine. Exclamation mark, right? This is um, where we do whatever the hook should do based on whatever state it's in, All right? Um, the first state is going to be case hook, uh, hook status dot extending. Right, so assuming we're in the extending state, this is the, the most complicated one, right? The others are actually very straightforward. Um, so in this state, we want to first of all check to see if we can finish extending. All right, and that's simply writing, in fact, I'll just copy and paste this line. That's just checking if uh, our hook value is um, greater than or equal to distance hook, all right? Um, and if it is, hook status equals hook status missed. All right, do you understand how that works? Hook greater than distance hook. Yeah, simple, right? Um, that's that 88 value we defined in the player. Um, if once hook has gotten so high uh, by adding speed hook to it or subtracting, you know, whatever, um, that it's um, greater than that, it goes, uh, we go into the missed state and we start retracting, okay? Um, next up, we're going to check for a hit, all right? Um, I'll copy this in as well, um, uh, complete with the comment. Oh, God, this is almost slower than typing it. Right, there we go. <laughs> Checking for a hit. So um, we're going to make hook hit um, equal collision circle. And if I just zoom in here, we can see what we actually have to give collision circle. X and a Y position as usual. Um, a radius for the circle. That's just going to, you know, that's the, the length from the center to the edge, um, um, which just defines how big the circle is, right? Um, the object type we're looking for. Um, and whether it's precise and whether or not to include the instance calling it in the collision check. So in this case, that's um, the X and Y is our X and Y plus hook X and hook Y. Okay, like I said, they're relative to the player. So we take the player's room position and we add these relative coordinates on top to give us a, uh, an absolute room position where the, the hook currently is. 
And then we're going to check a four pixel radius circle around that point for any instances of P entity. All right. Um, if it finds multiple, it's kind of random which one you'll get back, but that doesn't matter to me too much. Not enough to do like collision list or anything like that. Um, doesn't really matter too much if we get multiple. Um, it'll just give you one back anyway. Uh, precise, it didn't need to be precise, obviously, so I take that to be false. Um, and true for not me. Um, we don't want to include the player in the collision check, um, just in case, for whatever reason, you've made the player into an entity, which would be very strange, but um, theoretically something you might do. Uh, then we're going to say if hook hit does not equal no one, and that's the most important thing, right? It's just checking because this collision circle is going to return either no one if we don't find any collision, or it's going to return the ID of the instance that we've collided with. Um, so I'm assuming it's not no one, then it must be the ID of something we've collided with. But we also want to check uh, if global.ilifted is not um, equal to hook hit. Um, this is just specifically because I allow you to do these sorts of things even when you're carrying an item. You might prohibit that and be like, you can't use items while you're carrying an object, so that's up to you. But um, if we do the, the hook shot while we're carrying an item, because it's important for our quest, we want to be able to grab the hat and then still be able to hook shot over gaps and stuff like that. Um, I'm checking to see if global.ilifted is not equal to the thing that we've hooked because it's possible for you to you hold the object when you're lifting something above your head so if you were to face upwards and fire the hook shot um that hook shot could easily collide with the thing you're carrying right so we want to just exclude that from the check all right so then uh if we get into here we can assume we found an instance id of something we can hook and it's not the thing that we're carrying all right so therefore we want to act depending on what is hit. And then we're going to do um, another switch statement, and I'm going to copy it in. Um, it's a big chunk of code, um, so I'll zoom out. Um, but we'll be here all day if I were to actually type all this in. <laughs> um, let me just get it so it looks about right. There we go. Cool. OK, so. Um, so we're acting depending on what is hit by doing a switch statement with the ID of the thing we've hit and the variable it contains that we defined earlier in P entity that tells us whether it's hookable. Okay, again, the zero for not hookable, uh, one for something we should um, pull to the player, and um, two for something that we should pull the player towards. Right. Um, so the more complicated one is if it's zero, um, because there's still things we might want to do. So we set default here, um, that'll carry out this code if it's zero or if it's um, anything we have. It'll carry out if it's anything we haven't otherwise defined, okay? And we haven't defined zero, otherwise we'd find one and two down here. So assuming it's not one or two, it'll do this, all right? So zero or somehow anything else, all right? And if that's the case, we want to check to see if it's an enemy or if it's something that can just be hit, you know, just the exact same way we do with the bow and our melee attack and so on, right? So we do, again, if object is ancestor, the um, the thing that we've hit and its object index is p enemy, if that's true, we run the hurt enemy script. Um, here I've just decided, you know, uh, I've put the hook hit in as the enemy, I've decided it does one damage because, you know, it's a hook shot, it doesn't really necessarily want to do a lot of damage, it's just used in a pinch. Um, the source is ID, which will just be the player, um, and knockback of five, just so we can see it doing something. You might want it to not have any knockback. It might be a bit OP to be able to stun lock every enemy in the game with a hook shot, but uh, up to you, balance your own game. Um, then we're going to set hook status to equal hook status missed, all right? So it's going to start the hook uh, retracting. I guess you could have called this retracting rather than missed. O up to you, I decided to call it missed. Um, and then if it's not an enemy, we still want to check to see if it has an entity hit script. So we else uh, this if statement and we do another if statement in here that says if hook hit dot entity hit script um, is not minus one, then with the thing that we've hit, execute its script. Okay, exactly the same as anything else that we have hit stuff with. Um, and then again, hook status equal hook status dot missed. So we go into the retracting stuff and we start up here actually retracting um, the hook. Okay. Um, assuming none of this is true because um, this is actually a hookable entity, um, it's either one or two. If it's one, we set hook status to be pulled to player, and if it's two, we set hook status to be pulled to entity, and then hooked entity um, equals whatever ID it is. So, okay, we, we pass that along. 
obviously important that you do this because um, this uh, variable will persist frame after frame, whereas this one's just uh, local and we'll, we'll need to actually do stuff with the hooked entity. We don't want to be checking for a fresh collision with it every frame, right? So we want to actually bury it in a variable and then just set our status appropriately. All right, and then once you've done all that, um, make sure you're breaking at the end of each one of these um, switch cases, always very important. Just highlight the whole thing and you can see, because it highlights it, which one, um, which block it connects to and just make sure your default, uh, your case one, your case two are broken and um, go to your case uh, for hook status extending here, just highlight this, come down to the bottom and find where that one is. Uh, in that case it's this one, so it means we, we're actually missing one. Um, so let's put that in there. Uh, is that correct? Oh yeah, we also need one for the switch statement itself. Like that, just again, highlight these, make sure that they match up, find the one that matches up with case, uh, the, the case statement there, um, and put a break there, okay? Again, just comb over everything because it's very easy to make a mistake here. That one connects right to the top up here and so on. This is why we indent so we can see these things a little bit easier and it's it's still a nightmare even then, right? Okay, just make sure that all lines up. And then after this break, because we're still, that's where our, our switch statement continues, we want to define the other states. So pull the entity towards the hooked player. So case no, not all caps, case hook status dot pull to player. Did my caps a little bit early there. Um, if that's the case, um, uh, what we're going to do is this. Man, pasting in blocks is hard to get the indentation right. I don't know if there's a way to do that smartly, but that's what it should look like. <laughs> okay, so um, in the case, the hook status is um, pull to player. Um, we want to, um, no, that's, that comment is wrong. I don't know why that's there. Uh, but with a hooked entity, uh, what we're going to do is uh, take x and set it to equal um, the other dot x. So we're taking our hooked entity, the, the thing that we have actually hooked, and we're changing its x and y to match the x and y of our player plus hook x and hook y. Again, um, other dot x is going to give us our player's x corner and other dot hook x is going to give us, again, the hook x that's buried in the player. We're only doing other here because we're doing with hooked entity. So this is to get values from the player. And we're just doing that same relative coordinate thing again. The same thing we did um, up here when we did the collision circle thing. We did like x, x plus hook, hook x. We're doing that again and just setting um, the x and y of whatever we have hooked to be that position. All right. Uh, I'm just going to do that every frame, and since it's doing that every frame, and we're already updating this every frame uh, based on whether or not we're extending or retracting, that's going to pull the object uh, towards the player. All right, pretty straightforward. And then um, the next section's pretty similar. I'll just leave some space here and paste this chunk of code um, to pull the player towards the hooked entity. So if uh, the hook, uh, if the state is hook status dot pull to entity, um, we run a, another switch based on the image index because that gives us our direction zero, one, two, and three based on you know, uh, right, up, left, and down. And uh, based on each one of them, we just take you know if if, we, if it's the right, then we add speed hook um, to the player. If it's uh, y, then we subtract speed hook from our y. If it's you know if it's uh, left, we subtract speed hook from our x, and so on. Right. We move right, up, left, or down based on the direction that we were facing when we did this in the first place, all right? And then that will conveniently line up because we'll be retracting the chain at the same time. Um, so we'll retract the chain by an amount and then move the player that same amount in that direction. Um, so the hook will effectively stay where it is. Um, as we move towards it, all right? And it just moves us towards it. And because we're just moving straight up by changing our coordinates, we're gonna bypass any collision or anything like that. Uh, so you do wanna be careful with your level design that you don't end up like getting yourself stuck in walls and things like that. But um, for me here, uh, to keep it simple, that's just gonna be a level design problem. <laughs> so um, just bear that in mind, okay? Again, just take a moment because as obviously I'm copying and pasting a bunch of stuff as you're writing this. Just make sure you're getting these breaks in. They're very easy to forget, all right? Again, just highlight them, make sure they line up um, and just make sure because we've just got a lot of blocks of code. And when you get a lot of blocks of code, very easy to make a mistake with your braces. Um, 
so just be sure to just check them now and again make sure you're getting everything uh, lined up and correct okay and then after that that is uh, after that break there um, this brace indicates the end of that um, switch statement and the end of the state machine okay because that's all about different states covered um, the only other thing we want to do in here is finish retract and end state so how do we actually get out of this state we want to say if hook is less than or equal to zero um, after all of this has gone off so obviously we start at zero but um, by the time we get to here if we've only just arrived in the state we'll have a hook of something like a three or something like that because we'll have added speed to it so the only time we're going to get to here and hook is going to be less than zero is if we are extending negatively all right so we can just check if hook is less than or equal to zero and if it is hooked entity equals no one uh, state equals player state free and um actually that's it yeah we can just end it there um and then at the end of that the next time we come around we'll be in the free state so it'll start executing that all right now we haven't done any of the drawing stuff for this um but this will actually just about work i think oh there's one thing we might have not set yet yeah we can't actually equip the hook um so let's actually go to uh o game um, and further extend that temporary section we had um, down here where we were just making um, items unlocked. Um, we can just go to, we can just uh, copy and paste one of these lines to play our item unlocked lines and just put item hook there and set that to true. Again, just in its own little blocks, we will get rid of these eventually. Um, we don't need to define its ammo because it doesn't have any, it's a minus one, so it will not show any ammo. Good little demonstration of that working. Um, you can see there we have like five bombs, 15 arrows, and just no number shown at all for the hook shot. That's by cycling to it. Now, if I press control, we get the little Mega Man pose, and uh, it is actually doing the full thing, like the hook is extending. Like if I stand under here, aim up, we can see we can actually hit the grass and break it apart. And if I press it again, we'll hit that grass. If I hit it again, we grabbed that coin and dragged it towards us. The same again for that one. Um, we can probably hit the enemy with it as well. We line it up right. There we go, we're actually hitting it. I don't know how much health that thing has. Uh, a lot, apparently. Um, we can hook ourselves to the signpost, like that. You can see, I just press it, and we get hooked to it. Okay, it's just invisible, but it is doing all of the logic, okay? It's all there. Um, so uh, that's everything for this episode, because it's, there was a lot of code. And then next episode, um, just to break it up a little, we'll handle actually drawing it and drawing each sort of section uh, of the hook shot, like each little bit of chain. All right, it's not not super complicated, but I think we've we've done enough for one video. All right, so thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll catch you all next time. A huge shout out in particular, and in no particular order, to the following patrons: Max M, Raildoor, Bowser the Dog, Jonathan, James Grimley, Robert Churches, Daka Dondigo, Bertie T, Relentless Rex, Jason, Dark Rider Zero Three One Eight, Rupinda, Renny Dam, Samia and Yai Like a Glow, Yoram Pater, Cabbage Pants, Biggie, Kaiser Ho, Reva, Vapaleon, Andrew Gilbert, Jason Welch, Phil Keen, Odd Spiral. Jordan Haig, Feral Princess, Arctics, Rachel Stewart, It's Matt Poor, Philip Sheard, Stephen Shenier, John Kenai, Michael Kolich, Julian Cropley, Gage Hunter, Elizabeth and Landon Brown, Tranquil, Jake Crumsey, Darth Wolf, Isaac Miller, Eric Santana, Adrian.exe, Josh Verbin, JD O'Dea, Jiminy Whippets, Timothy Hare, Elijah Kang, Blint BSE, Troy Nile, Zardrian, Miguelan, Daniel Blatt, Severus, Sal the Thief, Blenny Savant, and Falkwood. Thank you all so much, and thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.